Hi, this is Ryan Zell of the newly formed Christian Virtue and Grace Channel, and we are going to look at the false witness against the Catholic Church on idolatry. I am titling this presentation, Do Catholics Worship Statues? You Catholics worship graven images. You Catholics are idol worshipers. Catholics changed the Second Amendment so they could hide the fact that they worship idols. There are more, but this will suffice for now. As you know, the Ten Commandments in the Hebrews, the Protestants, and the Catholics are all numbered differently, and that may be the subject of another video in the coming future. Here are the three different Second Commandments in the Protestant, the Jewish, and the Catholic Commandment Scheme. What the Catholic Church did, and this comes from Augustine, is combined Deuteronomy 5, 6 to 10 into one commandment. The first commandment encompasses the first and second commandments found in both Deuteronomy 5 and in Exodus 20. Protestants have taken Deuteronomy 5, 8 and 9 as the second commandment. You shall not make for yourself a graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that on the earth beneath or that is in the water below the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. In the Catholic scheme, the first commandment, I am the Lord thy God, Thou shalt not have strange gods before me. Catholics have combined Deuteronomy 5, 6 to 10 as the first commandment, which I will not read, but there is nothing to hide because all one has to do is go to Deuteronomy 5 or Exodus 20 and see that what the commandments do state. The Catholic arrangement of the Ten Commandments helps in memorization, and that is the reason Augustine lists the Ten Commandments and became the standard for Catholics. Now we have to ask, just what is a graven image? To answer this question, we will take a look at the Jewish, the Catholic, and the Protestant definitions of what a graven image is. As the Second Commandment states, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image, nor any manner of likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth below, or that is in the water underneath the earth. Thou shalt not bow down unto them, nor serve them. If God forbids the making of graven images, then there are problems we will find in the Bible. In Exodus 25, And you shall make two cherubim of gold, of hammered work shall you make them on the two ends of the mercy seat. Make one cherub on the one end and one cherub on the other end. Of one piece with the mercy seat shall you make the cherubim on its two ends. The cherubim shall spread out their wings above, overshadowing the mercy seat with their wings, their faces one to another. Toward the mercy seat shall the faces of the cherubim be. Protestants are very much aware of the fact that there are images mentioned in Scripture, but that fact does not curtail them from issuing the false witness against Catholics. Decorations, which when viewed, brought glory to God's actions in history. Numbers 21. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who has bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole, and if a serpent bit any man, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. Notice, the Jews had to look at the bronze statue of the serpent to be healed, which shows that statues could be used ritually, not merely as religious decorations. In 2 Kings 18.41, King Hezekiah destroyed the bronze serpent. This is the same bronze serpent that Jesus Christ compared himself to in John 3.14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. In Chronicles 28.18 and 19, For the altar of incense, made of refined gold and its weight, 
Also, his plan for the golden chariot of the cherubim that spread their wings and covered the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. All this he made clear by the writing from the hand of the Lord concerning it. All the work to be done according to the plan. All one needed to do is go to Ezekiel 41, 17 to 25 and read the beautiful imagery that Ezekiel was privileged to see in a vision of the new temple. To the space above the door, even to the inner room and the outside, and all the walls around about in the inner room and the nave were carved likenesses. The cherubim and this palm trees, a palm tree between a cherub and the other cherub, and every cherub had two faces, the face of a man toward the palm tree on the one side and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. They were carved on the whole temple around about. From the floor to above the door, cherubim and palm trees were carved on the wall. We can see that God in the Old Testament issued commands for images to be made, but those images being made were not images that were being worshipped. Jewish thought on images has evolved over the centuries. I'm not going to bore you with the citations from the Talmud or the Mishnah. The Jewish painter-sculptor Toby Kahn said that it seemed clear to him that the root of the law was idolatry, and because he doesn't see people worshipping idols or images anymore, and because we don't know what God looks like, he doesn't worry much about the issue of graven images. He doesn't see any problem creating an image of a full likeness of a body. He also stated that just as God created the world, so artists of this world serve God by creating. Statues, carved images, drawings, all expressed in images, the same gospel messages that scripture itself communicates by word. Thus, image and word illuminate each other. We can find the Catholic understanding of images and graven images in the Catechism in Numbers 2129 to 2132, and it can be found in other places as well. If the Catholics are doing it, it must be wrong. All images are graven and amounts to idol worship and paganism. Despite the evidence that God himself commanded the making of images does not matter because without this charge against the ancient Catholic faith, it removes a much needed weapon against the church. I would like to introduce to you Dr. Sandra Richter, who has a PhD in Near Eastern Languages and Civilizations. We will hear a portion of the question and answer session of a lecture given at the Evangelical Theological Society in 2010. Um, uh, one, uh, one of the reasons, reasons that, that uh, these, these two, two are often, often separated, separated out, out is because, because their work is, is unique and, and that they, they are filled with, with the spirit of wisdom, wisdom for, for art, art and uh, uh, creative tasks. tasks. And, and I, I had wanted, wanted to bring this book up, up so I'm now um, giving a, just just a, a blatant, blatant commercial. Presence, Presence power, power, and Promise, it's actually on special, special out at the, temp uh, at the, at the tables. tables. This, this is, is a wonderful collection of essays on the Spirit in the Old Testament, Testament. And, and there is an essay on here on your two heroes uh, by none, none other than Rick Hess. Hess. Uh, and, and one, one of, of his points, points is that Bezalel uh, uh, and, and, oh, I can never say, say his name, Ophelia, um, um, are uh, uh, empowered what? due to, I, I, I did, did make this statement, statement. They, they already have a certain, certain skill set that is augmented by the Holy Spirit, Spirit and, and their skill set is for art and carving and decoration, and, and they, they are, are the ones who make the tabernacle the amazingly visual, impactful place that it is, uh, and, and yet the Holy Spirit comes upon them to make that, that above and beyond what their, their own skills as artists are able to accomplish, to accomplish. Uh, Hess, Hess makes, makes the argument that one, one of the reasons that they needed the empowerment, empowerment of the Holy Spirit is they're, they're not just making any building, building. They're, they're making, making a tabernacle. tabernacle. 
and, 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 and I, I love, love that. that. I think, I think that's, that's very powerful. powerful. So, so back, back to the, the sense, sense of estrangement of the artistic world, I think, I think one source of that, a major source of that, is the anti-comic theology of the Old Testament. Testament. You shall, shall not make an image. image. But, but we, we have traditionally mistranslated image over and over and over, and over again. again, and this is why we all need to get PhDs in the ancient Near Eastern literature of the Hebrew Bible. The, the word image, image is, is not simply image, it is Psalm in the Hebrew, it is Hebrew. in the Hebrew, it is an idol. And, and if you were any one of Israel's neighbors and you heard the word Selim, you, you would not hear artwork. artwork. You would, you would hear animated incarnation of the deity. deity. That's, That's what you would hear. hear. And, and the, the Ten Commandments, Commandments command not that, that artwork is forbidden, forbidden but, but that making animated incarnations of other deities, deities is forbidden, because Yahweh has already made his Selim, and, and it is you. you. I would like to recap what Dr. Sandra Richter had said at the Evangelical Theological Society in 2010, that Bezalel and Oliab endowed with the Holy Spirit to build the tabernacle. That image in Hebrew is Selim, and the image in Arcadia is Salmu. That the graven image in the second commandment is an idol, an image of an animated incarnation of a deity. If you heard the word Salem or Salmu, you would not hear the word artwork. You would hear animated incarnation of a deity, not artwork. The Ten Commandments does not forbid artwork, but that of making an animated incarnation of a deity, and that was forbidden or as Dr. Richter states, foreboden. Why? Because Yahweh has already made his selim, and it is you who is made in the image and likeness of God. Now that we know what a graven image actually is, and that the definition has been misinterpreted for centuries, and that this charge of idol worship is not only unfounded and unwarranted, but that the ignorant continue to use it by twisting scripture and applying it to us. Artwork has been mandated by God for both his tabernacle and his temple. Archaeology has shown that in synagogues, artwork appeared on the walls. God forbid the worship of statues, not the religious use of statues. There are Old Testament texts that bear everything we say out, including Exodus 25, 18 to 20, 1 Chronicles 28, 18 to 19, and Ezekiel 41, 17 and 18. The bronze serpent in Numbers 21, 8, 9, had, one had to look at the bronze serpent to be saved. Images as aids to worship. Catholics use Drawings, images, statues, music as aids to keep focused on the person or object being depicted. That can include paintings, drawings, nativity scenes, pictures of Jesus or the Holy Family, movies, cinema such as Ben-Hur or The Passion would be considered graven images if the fundamentalists had their way as well. Wearing of crosses and crucifixes and bumper stickers of fish or crosses being strung together. I can go on and on as such, as Protestants who wear the Holy Spirit pin on their suits or lapels or sports jackets are graven images as well, if you want to look at it like that. We see in 2 Kings 18.4 that when the Israelite people began to adore the bronze statue as a snake god, whom they named Neshtatan, the Lord becomes angry, and the righteous king Hezekiah had it destroyed. Do you wear a wedding ring? Well, that is a pagan practice. Do you hunt? Well, your goddess is Diana, the goddess of hunters. Did your bride wear white on her wedding day? Again, another pagan practice. Do you carry photos of your family in your wallet, pocketbook, or even on your phone? Do you wear a crucifix or a cross around your neck? All graven images, according to the fundamentalists. 
We do not merely look at icons, images, and statues, but look through them and discover ourselves engaged with the truth. Christian iconography expresses itself in images, statues, icons, and the same gospel message that sacred scripture communicates by words. Images and word illuminate each other. God revealed himself to us in Jesus Christ. The Magi all fell and worshipped the child made in the perfect image of God. Then, opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And God, who blessed his creation and everything in it, is worthy of being blessed, such as water, oil, land, garments, and even images depicting him. God has revealed himself in various images, most especially in incarnate Jesus Christ. It is not wrong for us to use images to deepen our knowledge and love of God. That is why God revealed himself in these visible forms, and that's why statues and pictures are made of them. Anti-Catholics cite Deuteronomy 5.9, where God said concerning idols, You shall not bow down to them. Since many Catholics sometimes bow and kneel in front of the statues of Jesus and the saints, anti-Catholics confuse the legitimate veneration of a sacred image with the sin of idolatry. Standing, kneeling, bowing, and prostration are postures in worship. Although bowing can be used as a posture in worship, not all bowing is worship. For instance, in Japan, people show respect to each other by bowing in greeting. Similarly, a person can kneel before a king without worshiping him as a god. In the same way, a Catholic may kneel in front of a statue while praying isn't worshiping the statue or even praying to it. And any more than a Protestant who kneels with a Bible in his hands when praying is worshiping the Bible or praying to it. To recap, images are not graven because they are not the animated incarnation of a deity. We are not worshiping statues or images as deity. Images help us to focus on what the image is trying to convey, much like the word conveys its message. The Catholic Church has not altered the Ten Commandments or removed the prohibition of graven images. The triune God has revealed himself with identifiable images. Ancient of days, fire, a We need to make distinctions between the terms latria, Dulia and hyperdulia. What is the difference between veneration and worship? Dulia means veneration or homage or honoring. It is different in nature and degree from that given to God. It includes honoring the saints and seeking their intercession with God. Hyperdulia means veneration or homage as well, but it's the special veneration given or accorded the Virgin Mary. Her unique role in the mystery of redemption, her exceptional gifts of grace from God, her preeminence among the saints. Hyperdulia is not adoration, and adoration is reserved exclusively for God. Latria is the adoration reserved only for God alone. Only God